We sailed for two days after leaving the marina in Chiapas, Mexico, before dropping the hook for some rests in Hatuco. But with some nasty weather forming nearby, we had to keep moving. So we set sail for Barra de Navidad, 560 nautical miles further up the Pacific Mexican coast. We just woke up and it is definitely time to get a move on. I just checked the latest model runs and it definitely looks like a tropical storm is going to form. It's just a matter of how long it takes to form and whether it stays off the coast or comes inland. So we're gonna get moving and start running up the coast here. We wanna get all the way up to Barra de Navidad as soon as we can because there's a nice lagoon that looks really well protected from any sort of tropical storm or heavy weather. We're gonna pull the anchor and get underway. About six days in front of us, probably. Let's go. Windlass is on. Let me see it. You just put those out. Oh, there's a fish here. <laughs> just got another bite. <laughs> like literally two minutes later. motoring for the first few hours and we caught a few bonita but the wind is slowly starting to shift around for us a bit so we put our head sail and our main up and we're doing about four knots so we wanted to average about five but we're gonna try to sail while we can 534 miles to go so I'm down here and I'm gonna make us Thai noodles and mahi for lunch I decided to go ahead and make this meal because the conditions are pretty good out and I want to save all of the food that I prepped for when I don't want to be down below cooking. So I'm down here cooking and I just heard the fishing lines go off. Ma! Want me to slow the boat down? Uh, it came off. Back to cooking. Brooke just finished lunch and it smells really good. Wow! <laughs> All right, it's 5 p.m. and the wind is slowly dying on us. We just went to turn on the motor to motor sail and our oil pressure pegged. So Gary's down below troubleshooting and I think he's gonna maybe try changing our oil and see if that helps. Always something. Well, this isn't gonna be very fun, but we're at about the hours recommended for an oil change interval and when we rev up the engine to above like 1800 RPMs, the oil pressure gauge shoots all the way up to like pegged. So it seems kind of weird. I messed with the wires on the sender a little bit to see if it was just a loose connection there, but it's like very consistent with RPM. So it's either the oil, the oil bypass in the filter or the pressure relief valve in the filter assembly. But I'm just going to start with an oil change because that's the quickest, easiest thing, and we'll go from there. All right, I've drained the old oil and put on the new filter. So now I just need to add the right amount of new oil. We're just bobbing out here as Gary changes the oil, but it looks like there's some storm clouds forming over the mainland. Okay, oil is changed. Let's go fire it up. I really don't think this is gonna change our problem at all, but it was a necessary first step.
The old change did not solve our problem, so Gary went back downstairs. But basically what's happening is our oil pressure gauge, whenever we rub up, the needle normally is around 60, but it's pegging all the way past 80. Still at 10? Pegged. Pegged. I don't see how there can be it. I don't know. It's like weirdly consistent. I don't know, it might just be electrical, it could be a bad sender, or it could be something wrong with the oil passage somewhere, but I don't know. What's the risk of running it with the high, when it goes the high oil pressure, could it ruin the engine? Yes. If it's truly, if it's truly pegged oil pressure, yeah, it can ruin the engine. Here he has me just motoring slow at a low RPM, and he's down there checking something. I don't know. I hate this crap, though. It's pegged right now. We only have three knots of wind right now, so we're not really able to sail. We're about mm, two miles from the coastline. We can still see it. Um, but there's really no good place for us to go right now. We have to keep moving. Oh, but a dolphin's coming over. Literally right now when my mood is absolute garbage. Ah, I can't leave the helm though to go see it. Ah, I think it's gonna come right by. Okay, there's a dolphin. What? There's dolphins. Not the wiring because the the resistance at the sender goes to open circuit at higher RPMs. Okay. So it's got to be the sender. Or it's the actual oil pressure. We're just talking through what we think we should do. Um, right now we're just motoring at a really low RPM and that seems to um, be okay. But if there really is a problem, <laughs> we don't want to keep motoring. So we're going to talk about it and then get back to you guys. We are getting ready to get a squall, so we're going to put this oil mess away and deal with the squall. Currently still motoring just at low RPMs. sailing into that <laughs> doesn't look any better behind us or in front of us so doesn't really matter which way we go what about the engine oil pressure well I suspect it's just the sender that's going bad but I don't have a mechanical pressure gauge to put in there to verify that 
So I think for the rest of this sale, we're just going to motor slowly and keep it in the range where the sender works and shows us what the pressure is. And that's all we can do for now. We'll investigate it more once we get to the next destination. I have data. So I'm reading about oil pressure relief valves and diesel engines. Whose watch is it? Uh, I think it's your watch now. We haven't really had watches today. Starting now, we have watches. I spent most of my day with my head in the engine room. It wasn't very pleasant. It's my watch. I'm ready to kick the storm's ass. What storm? <laughs> Night and I just finished my first night watch. Um, motor is running. I only sell for maybe an hour before turning on the motor. The squalls that we saw didn't really have much wind in them, um, so we got some rain, but that's about it. So just truck it along. Still rain all around us, and I've seen some lightning in the distance, but nothing crazy. So pretty boring, which I like, and I'm going to get some sleep. Gary's turn. We're staying like half under the Dodger and half inside because it's raining. Hi, Garrison. Well, it is 4 a.m. and Brick just came up to take over. I had a pretty uneventful watch because there is zero wind, so we've been motoring for the whole night. But I did have something happen that I've never seen before. So I heard what I thought was like a boat, but then I heard it was up in the sky and it was definitely an airplane flying maybe just a couple hundred feet above the water. And they had no lights on. So we are off the coast of Mexico, so I'll let you guys decide what you think that was, but I'm pretty sure I know what was going on there. But time to get some sleep. Good night, Brick. <laughs> get some bit rest. I just got dry off after my morning watch. It was like misty rain all morning, which was kind of annoying. And around 4 a.m., a little after 4 a.m., I saw something that looked like a boat moving towards us, but kind of looked like a mass light because it was up high and I couldn't figure out what was going on. It was a red light with like green. It was really weird. So I woke Gary up and we actually think it was a drone. I don't know, maybe some relation to the plane that Gary saw, but we've never seen anything like that before. But it came in fast, it got like a good look at us, and then it basically turned and went the other direction. No idea what that was about. But we are sailing now, and Gary's up there dodging the rain. Yes, yes. <laughs> The wind died completely. It's 
day two. We have 417 miles to go. The seas are glassy flat and it's turned into a pretty nice sun sunshiny day since this morning. So calm, it's like glass and flat out and that means Brooke felt like making a nice lunch. Look what we have. Now they're coming. We are in the middle of eating our lunch and we got interrupted by dolphins, which is a welcome interruption. The water's so clear. They're just shooting all over the place in front of the boat. It's around 3 p.m. And we're getting a little bit of wind from behind. We have about eight knots behind us. So we're gonna rig the spinnaker up and try to fly it for a bit. I checked the radar and it doesn't look like there's any squalls around. So it seems like a good opportunity to fly it for a while. Maybe we can make a few miles with it. I turned us to port. Okay. You ready? And she's out. She's big and colorful and beautiful. And it feels good to have the sails out. And I'm just chilling in my favorite spot. The best seat in the house. I hope I don't drop this camera. like the colors of it they're all hanging out on the side look yeah they're all like trying to figure out what why is this big bright thing look at them all oh, So we just took down the spinnaker to get ready for our night watches and we have three knots of wind. So we turned on our engine and we're motoring at like 1200 RPM right now, only doing about four knots. And there's still some clouds and like stormy skies in the distance and a few drops of rain we've seen so far. But pretty boring day really, don't you think, Gary? Spinnaker sound was nice. Yeah, spinnaker. Lots of dolphins. Lots of dolphins, spinnaker sailing, no fish, and we just kind of really relaxed, read some books, and hung out. But that's okay. I enjoy uneventful and hoping for an uneventful night. I just finished with my night watch, and it was just in time to reef our main and put out our staysail because we have a squall that's blowing through. Uh, 
so it looks pretty large on the radar here. And right now it's only blowing like between 15 and 20 knots, but we see a lot of lightning and stuff in the distance, so we think that we might get slammed a bit. But anyway, I'm down here staying dry, and I'm gonna try to get some sleep while Gary uh, deals with the storm. <laughs> anyway, good night. Good morning. It is the morning of day three. We have 350 miles to go, and I just saw dolphins. <laughs> so I'd say our morning's off to a good start. We are sailing. We've been sailing all night, actually, which has been good. We've had um, we had a couple squalls, but mostly we've just had like a misty rain and about 10 knots of wind from behind. It's been nice. And I'm getting ready to check in on the SSCA net this morning. Uh, I think Gary had a little bit of a rough watch. She was wet the whole night. It was just like raining and the cockpit was wet and just really uncomfortable. So he's on there sleeping now. I hope he can get some good rest. Just moving along. Good morning. I just woke up for my morning watch. Last night was a little rough. We had a pretty long squall and then it rained all night and the winds were picked up, but with our staysail set, it wasn't really a big deal. We just cruised right along and we tried to stay down below as much as possible to stay dry. And this morning I woke up and Brooke had already rolled in the staysail and unfurled the Genoa and we're zipping along and the conditions are just absolutely perfect. The wind's behind us, there's a really calm sea state, and we're cruising along. I'm so proud of Brooke for just totally taking control of the boat. She still apologizes whenever she has to wake me up from a watch when she's up and I'm down below sleeping and we both need to be up to do something, but I keep telling her, like, she's totally in charge of this boat. She can change the sails, she can do pretty much everything, and it's pretty amazing to see how she's grown as a sailor. But yeah, I'm just gonna relax in the cockpit this morning and maybe do a little filming of these awesome conditions. I think we need to get a new American flag, huh? Brooke tried to stitch it about a month ago and hopefully we can find a new one here in Mexico. So we just wake up. I hear all this stuff going on on deck. And you run up here. Gary's trying to fly the spinnaker all himself, by himself with the main doing wing on wing. <laughs> I appreciate the effort. Solo sailing. It's not how I wanted to wake up this morning, but thinking back on it now is it pretty funny. He did have his life jacket on though, so I'm pretty pretty happy about that. <laughs> but we are flying the spinnaker now, so that is awesome. We're doing like five and a half knots, so I feel like we're finally making some ground. And we're coming up on Acapulco. We're hoping to get close enough to the shoreline there um, so that we can pick up a weather report and see what's going on with that storm. Anyway, I told Gary I need a minute before I come on watch because I woke up pretty abruptly <laughs> and I'm not ready to sail just yet. So, coffee first. All right, so now that I've had my coffee and I've relaxed a bit, it's time for my watch. And But before then, I'm gonna actually wash my face. 
Uh, sometimes when we're out here sailing for multiple days, you like kind of forget to do uh, basic things like wash your face. <laughs> uh, anyway, but it'll make me feel so much better. You're sleep deprived, <laughs> your schedule's all off. So like washing your face isn't one thing that you think you should do, but it's super important to, to take care of yourself still. When we only have like a two or three day passage, sometimes it's really tough on us to kind of like get into a routine um, and get used to only sleeping a few hours here and there. But normally by the third day, we start to feel pretty good. And Gary says that he feels better already today. I'm still a little groggy and struggling at it, but I think throughout the day, I'll hopefully get back into the swing of things and start feeling good. Uh, I think we have probably three more days to go. So this is like the halfway point and the halfway point is always like just a struggle for whatever reason. I don't know if it's like your body is like not used to only sleeping a few hours or what it is. But for me, halfway through, I kind of feel like, blah. <laughs> anyway, my face is washed. I'm going to change and get ready for my watch. Okay, I feel like a semi person again. I'm ready to sail now. <laughs> I'm ready for day three. <laughs> Well, we just jived the spinnaker. We're about 15 miles south of Acapulco and we were able to pick up cell phone service. So I was able to pull up the latest weather models and it doesn't look too great. The storm is definitely developing off the coast here. And depending on whether you look at the European model or the GFS model, it's going to hit somewhere between Acapulco and Zihuatanejo, which is about another 100 miles north of here. So our plan still is to run, 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 and get up to Barra de Navidad as quickly as we can. It looks like if our speed continues, we should be able to make it there by Monday morning. And it doesn't look like the storm will really move towards shore until about Tuesday. So we're cutting it very close, but um, our best option is to get to Barra de Navidad and get into the lagoon there and we'll be safe in there. Uh, we have other friends on a boat here in Acapulco who went in there thinking they could weather the storm there and they said it's really not suitable, there's just nowhere protected enough. So for now, just keep on sailing. With 300 nautical miles left to go and a tropical storm bearing down on us, this passage was just getting started. See you next time for part two of this journey.